Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the books that I plan on reading in the month of August. So August is going to be a wildly crazy month for me. There's going to be two separate TBRs for this month. There's just going to be like my general TBR for the month and then my vacation specific TBR. Me and my siblings are doing a Europe trip for a week and then I'll be visiting, we'll be doing Edinburgh, London, Paris, and then after they fly back to Toronto, um, from Paris. I'll go visit my friend from Barcelona uh, for a few days and then I'll fly back to Toronto. My boyfriend's coming up for uh, Toronto and we're gonna spend a few days in the city and then I have to go to Ottawa from a com for a conference from there. So like I said, this is gonna be split into two separate videos. So keep your eyes peeled for my vacation TBR coming out later this month. But these are kind of the general books that I want to get to um, basically in the beginning and end of August. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So this is actually the only physical book that I have on my TBR. The other two come out later this month and then one is an ebook. Uh, the first one is The Bronze Beast by Roshni Chachki and this is the third and final book in the Gilded Wolves, Gilded Wolves trilogy and I'm really liking it so far. It basically takes place in the late 1800s and it follows this group of kind of ragtag friends and the first book then kind of takes place in what is they have like this what is called forging so you can kind of make special things out of like metal or you know fluids or like anything so certain people have these type of different kind of foraging capabilities and it kind of takes off from there where they get approached to find this very old historical artifact and it kind of goes off from there. This being the third book in the series, I don't want to spoil it. And yeah, I've been really liking it so far. The first book was like it was okay, like it was three stars, but the second book I loved and I just can't wait to see what happens in this one. I'm going to be doing a reading vlog kind of showcasing this experience, so this will be up later in the month as well if you're curious to see what I, my overarching opinions are throughout reading this trilogy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be happy that I was able to kind of like marathon it and just read them all back to back to back which I think is like the way to go for a series that are like all the books are published but yeah like I said can't wait to finish this trilogy. Next up this is a new release that comes out at the end of August I don't think I'll be able to finish it this month but I definitely will be picking it up and it is The Ink Black Heart by Robert Galbraith and this is the next book in the Cormoran Strike series and I'm so excited for this I really love this series and I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, um, it follows Cormoran Strike who is a private detective and he gets kind of approached by different people to solve certain cases and this one like what I find really intriguing is his relationship that he has with his co-worker Robin so I'm very curious to see what happens next and the last book it covered in the span of an entire year and I feel like there was a lot of like stuff that didn't happen that I wanted it to so if like Cormoran and Robin do not get together at the end of this one I'm gonna be very mad but this one like I said comes out towards the end of August so I think this will be kind of like an end of August September read but I'm still putting it on here nonetheless. So next up I have The Signal Moon by Kate Quinn and this is a short story that comes out on Kindle August 1st and I really love Kate Quinn she is a historical fiction author I've loved all her books I love the Alice Network, the Rose Code, like I loved all her books and this when I saw that she had a short story come out I was very intrigued and this one kind of has like a time, not like time travels like side to it but it does sound really interesting so it says Yorkshire 1943 Lily Baines a bright young debutante increasingly grounded uh, ground by an endless war has trained traded in her white gloves for a set of headphones. It is her job to intercept enemy naval communications and send them to Bunchley Park for deception. Decryption. <laughs> One night she picks up a transmission that isn't a code at all. It's a cry for help. An American ship is taking heavy fire in the North Atlantic, but no one else has reported an attack and the information relayed by the young office, U.S. officer Matt Jackson seems all wrong. The contact that Lily has made on the other end of the radio channel says it's in 2023. Across a 80-year gap, Lily and Matt must find a way to help each other. Matt to convince her that the war she's fighting can still be won and Lily to help him stave off the war t uh, to come. As their connections grow stronger, they both know there's no telling when time will run out or their inexplan inexplainable 
link. So I think this one sounds really interesting. It kind of has like a historical context, but with a kind of time travel, like sci-fi component to it, which I think is just a really interesting combination. So like I said, this one will be, I think, a very fun short story to read. And lastly, this is another new release that comes out towards the end of August, and it is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've finally gotten into the Taylor Jenkins Reid's like bandwagon. I read or I listened to the audiobook for Daisy Jones and the Six, and I loved it, so I want to read more of her works. And so this is her newest book that is coming out that sounded really interesting. So it says here, Carrie Soto... Carrie Soto is fierce, and her determination to win at any cost has not made her popular. But by the time she retires from tennis, she is the best player the world has ever seen. She has shattered every record and claimed 20 Grand Slam titles. And if you ask Carrie, she is entitled to everyone. She sacrificed nearly everything to become the best with her father, Javier, as her coach. A former champion himself, Javier has trained her since the age of two. By six years... But six years after her retirement, Carrie finds herself sitting in the stands of the 1994 U.S. Open, watching her record be taken by her by a brutal, stunning player named Nikki Chan. After thir um, at 37 years old, Carrie makes the monumental decision to come out of retirement and be coached by her father for one last year in an attempt to reclaim her record. Even if the sports media says that they never liked the battle axe anyways, even if her body doesn't move as fast as it did. And even if it means swallowing her pride to train with a man she once almost opened her heart to, Bo Huntley. Like her, he has something to prove before he gives up the game forever. In spite of it all, Carrie, Carrie Soto is back for one epic final season. I think this sounds really interesting. I think Taylor, Taylor Jenkins Reid is an amazing author. I think her characters are so well fleshed out, they're dynamic, they're so unique. So I'm very excited to get my hands on this one. And I haven't read a book from like that involves tennis um, in any which way. So I think this one will be a lot of fun. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what books you plan on reading this month and all that fun stuff. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.